All right, let's talk about tomatoes. I grow tomatoes vertically, as you can see. I, I built a trellis, um, and we're going to talk about first off how this works. All right. Two important concepts. One is I only have one single growing vine. If you see how tomatoes grow, they start to put out suckers like this in between the limbs. These got to go, right? We're going to talk more about this in a second, but I'm just showing why this matters. One growing lead. Um, if you look down here in the plant, this is a good example. This right here, this is what they do. If I let this go on an indeterminate, on determinate tomatoes, I leave these because they're just going to turn into a bush. On indeterminate tomatoes, meaning that they keep growing and keep producing, I get rid of the suckers. Very important. And I just have one primary growing lead that continues to grow up the rope. Normally, I stretch this a lot tighter, <laughs> but because this is the year of pandemic gardening and I was in a rush and had limited supplies, I just did the best I could with what I had out here. Normally this would be 8 foot high, because by the end of the year these will be 12 foot long. They'll have gone up 8 foot and then started to come back down the other side. This year is going to be a little challenging for me because they're going to grow all over. I'm just going to do the best I can. Plus in Texas we have two short growing seasons because these go dormant in the middle of the summer. Come uh, mid-June through mid-August these are going to drastically slow down. When you look at the plants, flowers, they have to be pollinated before they're going to produce a tomato. Any time that you have a day where the day and the night is over 90 degrees, these are not going to pollinate hardly at all. It needs to get cooler in the evenings for them to properly pollinate. So once it starts getting really hot here in Texas, they're not going to pollinate uh, in the evening, especially the larger varieties. You'll still see the smaller cherry tomato varieties pollinate a little bit as it gets hotter. They tend to do better in the heat. Uh, there are also heat and humid tomato packets from like Tomato Fest, which is one of the places where I get my seeds. You can, got the, you can get the hot and humid pack. Um, they do a little bit better, but tomatoes in general don't like over 90 degrees. Um, during the day is fine, but if it's, if it's 90 at night, they're not going to pollinate. Okay, back to training them to go up the line. I'm going to show how I tie this real quick. So. Actually, I'm going to undo one just so, so I can show you what it would look like. Let's say, let's pretend for a moment that I haven't been out here for a week. And what this is going to look like after a week is like this. Pretend that there's a knot right here. That's what it's going to look like. So what do I, I come out after a week and I'm like, oh man, this is growing out of control. Well, the first thing I do is I have to untie the knot to let some line out. And then, big thing, the rope goes around the plant. The plant does not go around the rope. The plant is not happy when you bend it too much. So I follow the, the primary leading vine, and I gently pull up the whole plant until the full thing is supported. Then I go ahead and I tie my slip knot and what that allows me to do is to go up or down to tighten and loosen this plant as I need to. Um, in my case, I have to use these silly clothes lines at the moment because we talked about this. This should be completely tight. Uh, unfortunately, I just don't have the support on each end. So it, these lines in the wind, they'll slip along this. If it was super tight, it wouldn't happen. So I've got to play these clothes, guy, clothes line games. I'm not a fan. This should be completely taut. Uh, so that when you tie these up, they don't flex at all. This is just kind of a, you know, in a pandemic, you do what you got to do. So back to the pruning of this tomato. Now, I've got it fully standing upright. Now I want to go down and look. If you look at this, this is my growing tip. You can see the tiny little leaves that are growing. Now if we look elsewhere, we can find other growing tips. Let me find another one on a different plant here. Give me half a second. Here's the beginning of one. This right here, I call them suckers, but in, when they're this small, I could just pinch it off with my fingers and pull it off, or I could use these tiny little clippers to clip it off. But that little tiny thing is going to turn into a full-on leading growing tip. And then what's going to happen 
is that this leaf right here is going to be pushed down and it's going to start growing downwards. And we're going to talk about that in just a second because that's a problem as well. So I've got to get rid of all of these little suckers that grow on the plant. Here's one. Really important, don't cut off your, your top leading tip. If you ever accidentally do that, the plant stops growing and at that point it'll die because it won't get new leaves. If you ever inadvertently do cut one off, let one of your new ones that pops in, hopefully like this right here. Let's say I accidentally cut this, this tip off because I wasn't paying attention. This right here, I'm going to leave that at that point because it will become my new lead. I'll let it grow out and once it gets out to here, I'll take the rope and I'll start continuing it up. That will allow the plant to continue to live because it always needs new leaves to live. Once they start getting old, like this one, they get really old and leathery. They don't have as much photosynthesis. You know, they've got insect damage. Um, they're just not going to keep the plant alive anymore. Essentially, when you start seeing the tomato growth, wherever the tomatoes are at, I generally speaking cut off the leaves below that. Um, because those leaves are now to the point where they're no longer doing a lot of photosynthesis. Additionally, on tomatoes, and this is a really important concept, is I, I, I call them, I, I like them to have high skirts. And what that means is, is I want to keep them cut really high. So for example, see how this is starting to sag? And I'm going to use that point. If, if I had let a sucker stay here, it would have pushed this limb down even more. So that's another reason to get rid of those suckers, is to prevent them from dropping. But I want this tomato to have really high skirts. I don't want anything coming anywhere near the ground because the greatest point of contamination for a tomato is the soil and the bacteria and the viruses in the soil. When it rains, it splashes those up onto the plant. And it'll cause all sorts of, uh, of wilt and bacterial issues. That's why you don't see any leaves touching the ground out here. And, and these are not even trimmed as high as I normally uh, would trim them. Let me go ahead and trim a couple here just so you can kind of see what I would do. See a few white flies flying in there. Need to keep an eye on those. White fly infestations can be bad. In this case, since I'm outside with wind, I'm probably not going to get a ton of them. But if I was inside of a greenhouse, I would need to keep an eye on that white fly infestation. Little sap suckers will, will uh, cause disease to spread in the plants. So as you can see, I'm keeping really high skirts, and so when it rains, it prevents splash up onto the leaves um, from from the uh, any of the viruses or bacteria in the dirt prevents them from splashing up onto the leaves. Any of this stuff also gets cut down. There's no reason on indeterminates to have any of this growing. All that gets cut back. On a determinate, I would leave everything. On a determine, I would, I would bring up the skirts a little bit, same thing, protect them, but I would let all those suckers continue on a determinant. I would not cut the suckers back, only on indeterminates. High skirts, get rid of the suckers on indeterminates. See here on this one, see how there's this much growth that's not supported by the rope? I give myself some extra rope. I'm wrapping the rope around the plant, not the plant around the rope. And then I pull its support gently back up to where I want it. And because my thing swoops, I have to pin this to keep the wind from blowing it. Now I'm going to come in here and look, and I've already pruned the lower part of the plant. I look right here, I've got a sucker growing in here. Notice the difference between here, which is a sucker, versus this, which is the growing tip. The growing tip is usually the one that's tallest, but not always. Sometimes, if you don't pay attention, this one might start growing, and it'll end up being longer by the time you come out and check it. Follow the path of growth of the limb. Keep track of your growing tip, and get rid of the suckers. 
that is the proper way to prune a tomato plant for vertical growing. And again, this would normally be eight foot tall, very taut. By summertime, especially if you were not in Texas, it'd be all the way up here, and then it would start growing back down. As long as you keep that pruning process, the, the plant will keep on producing. One possible alternative that I like to do, once it gets up here to the top, I go ahead and untie it, and keeping in mind that at that point the plant is going to have no leaves from about here down. It's going to be completely pruned, just a vine. Now if these are long enough, which is why I have a lot of extra line on them, I'll go ahead and untie. It's going to be kind of hard to demonstrate, but I'll do the best I can here. If we pretend for a moment that this one was this tall and had pruned down to here, I would go ahead and I would lower the plant to where the vine, the bare vine, was dropping onto the ground. Now the plant is down here and it gives me that much more growing room to continue to come up. In this instance, it's a little hard to demonstrate that, but that's the concept. Prune it all, the old growth. Lower your vine by untying the knot and giving length. Letting the vine fall onto the ground. It's not going to pick up diseases because you've cut all the limbs off. Retie your slip knot. And that would have given you an additional couple feet worth of growth for the tomato. That's where your tomatoes don't grow at the bottom. Your tomatoes grow wherever the growing tips are at. So that's where the blossoms come out. They set the fruit. You're not going to get new tomatoes down in this old leaf growth. This is a good example. These are, if you look right here, these are ones that look like they didn't properly pollinate. Notice I don't see any tomato growth on there where it's really old or really slow if it is. If those don't uh, start producing soon, I'll nip this off. That's not where the growth is happening. The growth is happening, see that little tomato right there? This is where all of the new tomatoes come from. They don't, they don't grow new plants down lower in the, in the uh, tomato plant. So it's important to cut off all the old stuff. You also see like all the white bugs, the little white things flying around. Those are sap sucking type insects. And just like aphids, they insert uh, a beak or, or a tube and they suck the sap out of the plant. And it takes away a lot of the plant's sap that it would normally be sending to the tomatoes for production. So getting rid of those and keeping control of them is good. Oh, one other point I wanted to say. Normally, I grow tomatoes all in a greenhouse. I don't like rain getting on them. Um, I would rather water them with my own watering system. I can control exactly how much or how little I want. I can put it on timers based on temperature. Um, and I don't have to worry about splashing. Um, since I moved growing tomatoes in greenhouses, I have increased my tomato production drastically over what I had the years before. Um, I wish I could remember where I'd heard that from. There's some guy up in Idaho and he was absolutely right. Obviously this year I'm in the pandemic. <laughs> I didn't have time to build a greenhouse. That's why they're outside. And I'm already noticing the difference in productivity being outside versus if I was inside a greenhouse where I could control the wind beating them up, where I could control better control the water that gets to them. Um, the only thing in the greenhouse is you have to be more careful of insect control. Uh, out here they have a lot more natural predators to get to the bad insects. Um, the greenhouse is where it's out on growing tomatoes. I wish I had one over this.